Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 10th, 2022, around 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including new tropical cyclones in the East Pacific Basin and a look at Invest Area 97L in the Atlantic and what is going on with the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. While it's gone jump strands, everything taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is at least somewhat quiet out there. We do have an area of disturbance tagged Invest Area 97L today. It is sitting over the central part of the main development region at this point, not really producing much in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity thanks to all this dry stable air to the north. This will be heading northwest over the next couple of days and will pass comfortably north of the island chain at this point uh, where some potential development is possible. If we look at the area of interest highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, we can see that, again, this area has given a 30% chance over the next five days as it generally progresses northward and most of that development chances within the next 24 to 36 hours because once it starts getting significantly far north here it will encounter some pretty hostile conditions and where after development chances will then dwindle again this will stay well to the north of the island chain so no threat to that area either now if we actually look here in the east pacific basin we do have a couple of things going on today first of all we do have trump storm howard uh, you can barely see it here because it is a very small system. It is weakened. You can see there's not much shine and thunderstorm activity left with it. And this will be diminishing into a post-tropical cyclone later uh, over the next couple of days. We have another system back here as well. In the tropical Pacific, we notice that this area of disorganized shine and thunderstorm activity is gradually becoming better organized and will be heading towards the northwest over the next couple of days where some tropical development is possible. This poses no risk for concern right now to portions of coastal Mexico or the Baja Peninsula, so all is fine there. Now, focusing on Invest Area 97L and the remainder of the Atlantic Tropics, well, let's go ahead and jump straight into the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run valid for 2 a.m. Uh, this morning. We'll bring that out to about the current time, and uh, we can see here that, again, in the vorticity field at about 500 or 5,000 feet above the, the ground here, the, so the 850 millibar vorticity. We noticed that, again, we don't really have much of an associated signal here with our system today. It's kind of very disorganized and very broad, and that is kind of attributed to the overall, um, just the, the main development region isn't quite there yet for supporting tropical formation we notice that, again, some vorticity does get strung out and may try to consolidate as it uh, moves to the north of the islands here. Uh, but after that, again, not really much in the way of development. Again, one of the main reasons for that is going to be, if we actually look at the 200 millibar wind here, we've got this big bowling ball low right here off of the Canadian Maritimes in Newfoundland. And this is generating a lot of westerly shear out across this area in the uh, kind of the subtropics here. So as our storm begins to kind of move towards the northwest, it encounters all this shear. And because this isn't already a well-formed, well-organized, strong system, it's going to have a hard time surviving in that type of environment with some of these shear values over 40 knots. That's certainly not going to be conducive for tropical formation. The other reason is all this dry, stable air, we notice that, again, our system kind of leaves this pocket of moisture known as the intertropical convergence zone. And while there is some moisture there, there's also a lot of dry air kind of getting squeezed in. You can kind of see some of that there. So overall, the conditions look pretty unfavorable for additional formation. And we notice then more dry air continues to kind of plague the main development region especially for the next couple of days to the next week or so but after that it looks like some of this dry air begins to abate we notice that some of this dry air isn't necessarily going into the mdr we have another strong tropical wave coming off here uh, sometime about august 20th to the 24th so it looks like things are starting to pick up across that area but we're really going to have to kind of look for the European ensembles. So let's go ahead and jump straight into that here. This is the European ensembles right now. Uh, we can see the total precipital water forecast. We definitely notice that, again, we don't really have much in the way of deep moisture associated with anything right now. Our system will be kind of moving towards the northwest here over the next few days. And that dry, stable air does continue, but eventually the main development region does moisten up quite substantially by about August 25th. We notice if we look at the 200 millibar wind pattern at this time as well, 
We still do have a little bit of shear in the upper levels here, but mostly this is a pretty favorable look, especially for the central and eastern MDR. So these waves are going to have a much better time coming off there. So uh, again, one of the things is that these uh, climate prediction centers, so part of NOAA and uh, the National Hurricane Center, uh, did actually put out a moderate confidence risk area for tropical cyclone formation uh, in the Atlantic main development region. This is valid from August 17th through the 23rd of August. We noticed that not only do we have above average precipitation marked over here in the MDR, but we also do have a moderate risk of confidence. So this suggests that a 40 to 60% chance of tropical cyclone formation uh, exists in the tropical main development region from the 17th through the 23rd of August. And this does get pretty close to the Lesser Antilles Islands here. It's a couple hundred miles east of there. Um, so we'll have to kind of watch this. Again, no substantial impacts right now to the islands that are expected. But certainly this does kind of interest me. And uh, we also notice here that after that point, there's actually no tropical formation expected in the East Pacific Basin after this time. So globally, it looks like that we are actually starting to shift towards the Atlantic Basin starting to take over. Certainly the fact that this is put out by, you know, Climate Prediction Center and uh, NOAA, you know, in cooperation with National Hurricane Center, certainly has my attention for a spot near the Lesser Antilles Islands uh, within the next week or so. And I think that's going to kind of be reiterated by the fact that we have some pretty strong upper ocean heat content. We noticed that, again, especially the further west you go towards the Lesser Antilles Islands, the tropical cyclone heat potential really does increase. And so this definitely lends credence to the potential for a storm developing. Again, if we actually look at the GFS forecast, this would be about the time we're looking from August 17th through about the 23rd. And we notice that there is a tropical wave that does emerge here on the GFS by about the 23rd and moves westward. So this would be kind of within that window for potential development. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on everything. But so far, everything looks to be playing out as expected. Again, we are still a long ways away from the end of the hurricane season. So while we may not have as many named storms, we will certainly have the potential for more impactful storms. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.